You're listening to musician, author, and educator Bobby Borg, breaking down music, business, and marketing basics so they stick. Hey everybody, my name is Bobby Borg and welcome to USC's DIY Podcast Studio. The topic for my discussion today is the LGBTQ musician. And I'm going to break that down into three parts. Part one, challenges. Part two, effect. And part three, support. I've got a great guest with me today. Her name is Susan Bowling. Susan Bowling is an addiction recovery coach, an advocate for treatment alternatives, and a case manager for treatment plans, including detoxification, medical, and mental health issues. So hey, everybody. Um, the support for LGBTQ musicians and persons in general has really evolved over the years, but I think people would say that there is still a long way to go. So on that note, I just wanted to go ahead and start with part one, challenges. So what are some of the issues, Susan, that young LGBTQ musicians or, or persons in general um, uh, face today? You know, people in general, it's a question of identity. In major cities across the country, um, or with more uh, progressive people, uh, there's more acceptance. Um, but when we travel out of the other areas of the country where a person may have come from, absolutely not. And so um, some of those issues are isolation or a feeling of being separate or that uncomfortable feeling of having to um, present yourself uh, in a different way than the people that you're trying to just be a part of. Um, I think that uh, for musicians in general, you know, we're adding another layer to that, and that's that they're going to have a performance, uh, you know, identity. And so that is something that I know that in musicians I've worked with, that's an issue that's come up where they're like, you know, I don't want that to be what gets my attention. Or some other people are like, you know, this is who I am. Take right. it. Right. You know, exactly. so it can go either way, of course. Becomes part of their persona. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, some of the clients that I've, I, I have had and have spoken with me personally have, um, you know, mentioned some in terms of challenges. Um, things like, you know, th those persons that are either coming out or thinking mm -hmm. about coming out or have recently come out, some of the challenges might be, you know, um, uh, family members, mother or father, okay. just rejecting them and going, you're going through a phase and, and you right. don't know what's going on and you got to get it together. Right. Um, being around friends mm -hmm. or community where um, all of a sudden they don't want to be like, hey, the person that you knew is not the person that you knew. And the next day, let's just say, for example, showing up in a dress. I mean, that's not right. going to happen. So they kind of feel like, wow, am I just going to have to start over again and go uh, move somewhere else? So, you know, um, these things, you know, add to the, to the problems, sure. right? Well, I, I, you know, first of all, whether it's a person coming out as, you know, uh, gay or it's a person of trans identity that has, you know, there's a, a spectrum, spectrum of identity. Right. We have this sort of belief that people, once they come out as trans, that it looks exactly like right. that. And, right. and it's not. It's this very fluid um, identity. But it's a very personal matter, mm -hmm. like where the cisgender or heterosexual person um, just kind of moves through society and their topics of interest to talk about or to be asked about are you know a wide spectrum of things that aren't deeply personal about like oh I just learned this about you so who do you sleep with or what is your what does it look like I so it creates an a, a discomfort there you know for somebody who's just newly coming out like how are they gonna there's, they're being looked at differently, so it's a very personal issue. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think also for the for the for the for the um, person mm -hmm. that might be, you know, you know, sort of in conversation with maybe sure. someone, it's uncomfortable for them even if they are accepting of it and want to mm -hmm. be respectful of it. Just for like, okay, wait a minute. So what pronoun am I supposed to use and yeah. and things of that nature? So they really are caring. But yeah. now it becomes a comfortable for sh issue for them, which probably then becomes an uncomfortable issue. You know, so, I, it's, it's, I believe yeah. it. We're, you know, it's no different than any other type of like, what language am I supposed to use? Right. Um, when a person is meeting somebody of trans experience or they've identified, you simply say, what you know, what pronoun pronouns would you like? Or if you say it wrong, 
you simply apologize so that the person is assured you didn't mean to do it in any destructive way. Sure. You know, the heart shines through if that's where you're coming from. Right. And if it's not, or, you know, what we have sometimes are people that are like, you shouldn't be doing this. Well, that's a whole different message. Mm -hmm. But did I say it correctly or I apologize, I meant to say. That's, that's a very compassionate and appropriate, you know, situation. Right. And I've heard people respond to my comment as saying, you know what, I understand that mm -hmm. it's also difficult for the other person. So, right. therefore, they're, they're kind of yeah. a little bit light about it as well. So. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to part two, actually. Sure. Um, let's talk about, um, essentially, uh, we're going to talk about effect, really. And, and some of these things that I brought up, such as maybe family members not uh, you know, responding the way a person might like, um, maybe certain judgments in the community, um, or shall I say, outside their supportive community, right. um, you know, discrimination, etc. How can these things uh, sort of take a toll? And the reason why I'm asking this question is because I want people out there watching this to sort of understand that they're not alone in terms right. of what they might be thinking or feeling. You know, we have to acknowledge that um, there's a lot of violence aimed towards the LGBTQ population. Mm -hmm. I mean, there just is. And so when a person recognizes that on some level there's a possibility of them being targeted in some way, um, it does take a toll. Mm -hmm. There's that. There is, as you said, quite often families that are very unaccepting or families that are accepting but you have to behave a certain way in front of them. All of that really is a lot to carry, um, more so than, again, you're a cisgender person or yeah. you're a heterosexual person. Um, so, you know, one of the things that happens is a person needs to, it's best for a person to be in community, to find the community that they're most comfortable in, and education, you know. Right. Um, it's going to take some time, I'm afraid, before we become a completely uh, unassuming uh, society where we stop labeling people by genders, where we stop having gender reveal parties, where we stop doing all these things that are like, is it a boy, is it a girl? Like, we're just so conditioned to do that. Uh -huh. We're not in a time, I hope we do evolve to that time soon, but we're not in a time yet where it just kind of moves fluidly, where people just say they, Sure. you know? But, uh, but, but I mean, again, um, uh, you know, all, all that uh, being said, I just want people to know that you know, you're not alone if you feel, uh, you know, if the effects of all this makes you feel completely um, isolated, um, to even question, you know, what you're doing or what you should be doing, and even as, hor as horrible as it might be, even to have suicidal thoughts as well. I mean, these things are not yeah. uncommon, right? And again, and I just want people to know that they're not, they're sort of not alone in feeling these. I things. think with any oppressed community, you're gonna you're gonna find that you're gonna find people that have a spectrum of of um, experience there. So, sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Let's uh, let's move on now to the third um, topic, which is support. Um, so you mentioned a couple of things already, but what are some of the ways that the LGBTQ musician or persons in general can get the support they need? And and one of the things that you mentioned, which I think is very important, is just surround yourself around right. like-minded or yeah. uh, people. So any yeah. anything else that you might uh, you know suggest? just in Los Angeles alone, we have an enormous amount of organizations that are very visible, and in that are um, that create community that both create opportunities for the community to gather as well as activism in other uh, ways. So we have, we Los Angeles, you know, we're going to have more than Missoula or someplace like that. Mm -hmm. But um, seek out your community, you know, find your place there and um, be, be surrounded by that so that you get the um, support of others and that sort of uh, kinship or that feeling of of sameness with other people. Right, and let's just say again, you talked about Missoula, let's just say that's, that, you, that you're watching this from Missoula right now. <laughs> uh, they, you know, uh, it's, are there centers or like what might they be able to find maybe in a place that's not quite a big city like yeah. LA or New York or Nashville? You know, I think, uh, I can't speak specifically to right, Missoula. Right, sure, of course but, not. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure that there is a LGBT center. Uh, there are many trans organizations. And go online. 
there's some incredible opportunities okay. here you know that you can go online and get community that way as well there's social media there's you know it's a very um, emerging and powerful community that has been built over you know a long time awesome yeah. okay well great well thank you very much you're so welcome I, thank you I hope this was very helpful to the to the watchers and uh, you guys essentially what we've been doing um, is we've been talking about the LGBTQ musician and we broke that down into three main sections part one challenges part two effect and part three support so I hope uh, you found this clip somewhat interesting and helpful so hey you guys my name is Bobby Borg and I'm just trying to break down music business and marketing basics so that they stick I hope you guys will check out other clips and of course I hope you comment like share subscribe etc and as I always say peace and thank you very much for watching and thank you again for thank coming you. out thank you so much